I don't really know how to start videos. So with all the leaks and the three hopes, people are getting kind of antsy for an announcement of a new mainline game, myself included. And you know, if I were smart, I'd wait to make this video until after the announcement of a new game, but I don't want to wait that long. I have opinions and the world needs to hear them. This is a top 10 list, you probably already noticed that, but I've always found number cards to be kind of super over bloated and distracting, so. I think this one's a no-brainer, which is actually why it's so low. Of all the mechanics on this list, I think it's the most likely to return. And I know it's kind of cliche to want rescue drop back, but it's such a simple mechanic with so much depth and different applications that I'm genuinely surprised that they haven't even touched it since Radiant Dawn. Oh, and speaking of which... Oh, Transformations are cool. I don't care that Fates and Awakening have them. Telia said it better. Having units that flip between worthless and is pretty cool, I think. I don't really like the beast units in Fates and Awakening since they're just kind of like normal units with personal weapons and different animations. And like, there's more strategic depth with the Telia's beasts, but I'm gonna be real with you, dog. I just think they're neat. Ah, this mechanic brings me back to my youth. In Fates, if you saw an enemy unit that you liked, you could take it. Aside from the moral issue of compelling prisoners of war to turn their blades on their homeland, this mechanic's pretty sick. I really like the risk reward of putting this skill on weaker and squishier combat units with reduced accuracy, so you only get like one shot and you need contingencies for if they miss. And like, most of the games have some pretty cool and strong bosses that would be really neat to finally get control of. Think of the wrath that Barker shall unleash in your name. It's raining! So, this one kind of has an asterisk. The weather mechanic in FE7 exists. It exists to slow down the player like twice in the entire game. But I do think it had a lot of potential, it just needed more time in the oven. Imagine a dynamic weather system that impacts the maps differently as the battle goes on. There could be like huge wind thrusts that increase movement in one direction and decrease in the opposite. Rain and snow could return, but maybe actually design maps around them instead of just inserting them seemingly at random. There's a lot you could do with it, and I think it'd be a waste to barely touch upon the mechanic like once ever in the entire series and never deal with it again. I am homeless. <laughs> the Monastery in Three Houses is... a nightmare. <laughs> it slows the pace of the game to the pace of a slightly above average snail. It's way too big. All around, there are some problems that it causes. If only there were a mechanic from another Fire Emblem game that lets you interact with units between battles and can give buffs before important fights and encourages customization and personalization. Full disclosure. I'm biased. Fates was my first FE game, and I absolutely loved the online stuff with my castle. Just visiting and seeing what other people did with theirs, raiding their castle, fighting NPC armies that other people set up. I would adore having another mechanic like this. Number five. At least one Three Houses mechanic had to make the list, and even if the demonic beasts don't make a return, gambits are just so fun. They make dealing with huge groups of enemies more doable for dum-dums like me. They open up a whole host of wacky strategies that are just fun to experiment with. I think if it weren't for gambits, a lot of the replayability of Three Houses would be gone. Utility gambits enable the player to do so much stuff that feels like cheating, but you're not. Like putting the infinite range counter gambit on Battalion Vantage, Battalion Wrath Dimitri, and watching the fireworks, or just temporarily making half of your army immune to damage. Multi-tile dancing? Need I say more? FOUR! So, why was Link Arena removed? It's so much better than the Turtle Fest that was Fates PvP, and with the sheer emphasis on customization in the newer FE games, I cannot believe that they didn't even bring anything similar to this back in Three Houses. Thracia is king, and nobody's allowed to disagree with me because if they do, that makes them bad at video games and therefore worth less as a human being. But Thracia's capture mechanic is so fun. It's got more going on under the hood than most Fire Emblem games have all together. Bidding enemy captures with weak units, getting high value weapons and tomes, using it as a recruitment tool. There's already so much going on with this mechanic that you could legitimately just take it and slap it on the next game, and it would be great. Always do, there are. What can I say? 
I like twists on the rescue mechanic. This is probably another personal bias of mine since I'm partial to Fates. And listen, I'm talking about the Fates iteration of the mechanic because the Awakening version was terrible. But Dual Gauge is another mechanic that added a ton of options and depth that make the game just so much more interesting. It's got the risk-reward of trying to know when to use the attack stance and when to use defense stance. The nuances of dealing with paired-up enemies is fun. And trying to get the optimal pop on damage block, there's just so much you can do with this mechanic. I'd just love to see it used again. Number one! Hey, listen. Hear me out. Most people see fatigue and just use it as a reason to say that Thracia's unfriendly and move on, kind of like how Staves miss in Thracia. But the mechanic does something that I really, really wish I saw in more of these games. It incentivizes the player to interact with the full roster. Most of these games you can beat with a small force of like 10 juggernauts while the rest of your army waits on the bench. Wondering what could have been. Risha is one of the only Fire Emblem games where it feels like I'm directing an army instead of a merry band of friends because it forces me to use most of my units. Sure, Kane and Alva might not be the strongest, but they've got horses. We've got ground to cover. Why waste Shiva stamina when there's an indoor map coming up? You can bring stamina drinks back too if you want. I know a lot of people would riot if they aren't, but I think limiting their uses and having them just be there to prevent soft locking would be better since otherwise it's just adding mechanic and then immediately undermining it. So that's about it. Let me know if I convince you on any of my picks or angrily send me death threats about how I'm wrong and stupid and bad for even insisting such things. I promise I'm not just farming interactions. I genuinely want to know if I managed to convince anyone that stamina is good because basically everyone I've talked to about this disagrees with me for one reason or another. Well, I don't know how to end videos either, so come here often. <laughs>